In this tutorial, we look at the validation controls. And to understand what the validation controls do, let's take a look at this demonstration page that we already have set up. So we'll start the page. And when we look at it, it's got uh, two text boxes for input. It has this one that says enter age, another one that says enter shoe size. And it's this formula that we use to calculate your IQ. So we put in our shoe size. My shoe size, oh, my age, I'm sorry, I'm putting my age first, I'm 52. My shoe size is 9.5. And, and we press the calculate IQ, and it will multiply those two numbers together. So it reads stuff from this text box, reads stuff from this text box. And we can look at the VB code here in a second. But let's show you what the validation controls are for. Let's say I don't put anything in any of these text boxes, and I say calculate IQ. We get this, it's called the yellow screen, the yellow screen of death. And this is a not something you want your users to see. So how do we prevent that? Well, we can do some error checking to make sure that things are in these boxes. And if not, we'll display another error message rather than just again displaying that yellow screen. So to add the validation controls, I'm going to do this in the source. Uh, I'm going to go to my toolbox and go to the validation section in here and grab one of these controls. So the first one I'm going to grab is the required field validator. And I'm going to set it out here. Actually, its position in your source code is important. So I want it right after this. You know, so I have a text box here called TXT age, and then just some text I put on here as a prompt that's displayed next to the box. I want my required field validator to go right after that, because we'll see what this is important here in a second. So I put my required field validator on here. Then the next thing I have to do is say, uh, which text box do I want to validate? And it's not built in here yet, so its position has nothing to do with the text boxes validating. To do that, with the space bar, and we say control to validate, and then within here, we put the ID from the text box we want to check. So I could put my required field validator anywhere around here, but I'm really putting it close by here, just so my error message shows up in the right place. So I'm going to set this control to validate to this ID of the text box, and that says, OK, this required field validator is now checking this box. The other thing I'm going to do is change this error message, because right now this error message just says required field validator. This is the message I want the user to see if there's a problem. So I'm going to change this to please enter age. And the other thing I'm going to do, uh, well, let's, let's leave it here for now. Um, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to change the color here to red as well. So I'm going to change the font, or I'm sorry, the foreground color to red. Normally I would do this through a CSS class, so all my messages would end up the same way, all my error messages. So this is one required field validator. It's just for the age text box. But let's go ahead and run this again. And when we run it, we can see, let's see, I'm going to take this out, but leave the shoe size in. And now you notice, rather than get us the yellow screen, it comes up and says, please enter age. And so this is why the position of that required field validator is important. This error message is going to show up kind of in our HTML, wherever it's positioned relative in the HTML. So if it's right after this enter age text, it will show up here. If I would have dropped the, well, let's go do that. Let's go move the required field validator. If I remove this, move this required field validator to someplace else in my code, like if I put it before the text box, or actually, you know what, I'm going to put it all the way down here after this last text box. Well, now when I run it, and again, we'll put the shoe size in as 9.5, leave that blank, you notice the enter error message shows up down here. So the position of the required field, valid, required field validator its position is important. So I'm going to undo, oops, undo my changes there. Leave it back up there. So that's required field validator for the age box. I'm also going to add one to this shoe box by doing the same thing. And actually, I'm just going to copy this one once I have one on here that works and paste it in here. And um, the thing I'm going to change are, is the error message. I'm going to say, run saying, please enter your age. I'm going to say, please enter shoe size. 
and then the control to validate, I'm going to change this to txt shoe, which matches the ID of this blank line here. It matches the ID of this text box up here. So now when we run this, we can check both boxes. And so if I do it now with nothing in there, you notice both error messages pop up. I put something in here, say my age is 52, calculate IQ, that error message goes away. Or if I have nothing here, and I put in the shoe size, 9.5, then that error message goes away. Or if I get them both in here and I get it right, calculate IQ, it actually does it with no error messages. So this is just saying that something's required. It's We've got to have something in these boxes. That's really all it's checking for. It doesn't check what these are, if they're numbers or anything like that. So we'll look at that in the next tutorial, how to control that. But uh, let's just summarize again. That's the required field validator. And to get that, once we put it on the page, the things we need to set are the control to validate. And this error message, you want to customize the error message. Make it say something polite. And then I usually change the color on this to red just so it sticks out so the user can see it. Okay, again, that's a required field validator.